trees. So we need to change your IP address and router, which will be free of charge. So there you have it. That's what it sounds like. I wanted to make sure you could hear it for yourself so you can identify it. It's really just another version of those tech support scams I always tell you about. As you heard, the scammer says your IP address has been compromised from several countries, no less. The con artist offers to change your IP address and router for free. All you have to do is press 1 for the help. Well, obviously, don't do it. Just go ahead and hang up. Of course, no real company or government agency is going to call you out of the blue and say it just happened to discover a problem on your computer. Well, that's all for now. If you've been overbilled, misled, or ripped off, let me look into it. You can always get in touch with my team and fill us in by emailing Action9 at WSOCTV.com. I'm also constantly updating you guys on where my investigations stand on the WSOC TV Facebook page. We'll be back in a few weeks with more of our investigations. Until then, keep up with all of our news reports on the WSOC TV channel, on your Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire Stick device. Breaking right now at noon, police are investigating a shooting in Uptown Charlotte. This is a live look at the scene, which you can see is still very active right now. Also breaking, an 18-year-old girl killed. Deputies say her ex-boyfriend shot her. The threatening phone call that deputies say he made before the shooting and his immediate call to 911 after. And this man is accused of shooting a trooper in York County. He's in jail here in Charlotte right now. We are live outside the courthouse as an extradition hearing gets underway this afternoon. You're live for Eyewitness News right now at noon. We start with that breaking news in Uptown Charlotte. Police are investigating a shooting on East 8th Street, and this is a live look at the scene. Again, this is happening along 8th Street near North Davidson Street. You can see your camera zooming into what look like uh, bullet fragments on the ground there, casings perhaps there. Uh, we are certainly keeping an eye on that scene. This is just happening in the last 15 minutes. No word on a suspect in this case yet. No word on a motive in this case yet. We'll continue to monitor developments and bring you the latest throughout the next 30 minutes. Also breaking news right now in Burke County. Deputies say this man shot and killed his ex-girlfriend, just 16, 18 years old. And that shooting happened on Edward Circle in eastern Burke County near Eichard. Now, deputies say Jeremy Baldridge shot and killed his ex-girlfriend, Caitlin Truax, and then admitted to the shooting. Neighbors rushed to help the 18-year-old and placed flowers at the scene this morning. I just pray for that little girl's family. I could not imagine someone doing this. I mean, you hear it everywhere, but you don't expect a young girl to die for no reason. No, you certainly don't. Baldridge is set to appear before a judge tomorrow morning in Morganton. He has been charged with murder. Channel 9's Dave Faraday is in Burke County right now. He's speaking with the teen's neighbors and deputies, and he's going to have the very latest on this case for us tonight at 5 o'clock. Breaking right now in Lancaster County, a story we're following closely. Deputies are looking for a man now accused of murdering a woman there. They say Derek McElwain killed Kimberly Alger earlier this month. Her body was found just days later behind a vacant home on Spirit Road. Yesterday, deputies charged him with murder. We told you that he's already wanted on a domestic violence charge involving Alger. He drives a 2006 Nissan Altima and is considered armed and dangerous. If you see him or know where he may be, you're asked to call deputies right away. Also breaking right now in Catawba County, deputies have found a kayaker alive after he disappeared on the Jacob Fork River 12 hours ago. Deputies and volunteers began searching for Jeremy Gross shortly before midnight after he didn't return from a kayaking trip like he said he was going to. Now, investigators say they used a highway patrol helicopter to find him, and he was several miles downstream this morning. Deputies say he ended up camping out overnight along the river and planned to kayak some more today. 
In the next 90 minutes, this man will face a judge here in Charlotte. Willie Wright is accused of shooting trooper Alex Wise in York County during a traffic stop on Sunday night. South Carolina Bureau reporter Greg Suskin is live for us right now outside that courthouse in Charlotte. Greg's solicitor Kevin Brackett will be at that extradition hearing today, we understand. Yeah, that's right, he will. And Kevin Brackett, certainly no stranger to these kinds of hearings. Whether someone was arrested here in Mecklenburg County for a crime committed in York County or if a suspect just ended up at a hospital here, which is what happened to Willie Wright, who faces several charges, including attempted murder. We should also see Wright for the first time today, who was injured in that exchange of gunfire with Trooper Alex Wise on Sunday night in York County. Investigators say that Wise tried to pull Wright over on Mount Gallant Road for not wearing his seatbelt. They then say Wright took off. There was a chase. That chase went down India Hook Road to where the road dead ends at the Catawba River. They then say Wright crashed into a gate there, got out of his car, began shooting at Trooper Wise, who fired back. Now, both men were injured and taken to the hospital, but because Wise was wearing his bulletproof vest, he was not seriously hurt and, in fact, was released from the hospital that same night, only a couple of hours later. Now, that extradition hearing is scheduled here uptown at 1.30 this afternoon. I'm told that if Wright does waive extradition, he could be back in York County to face those charges by late. Late this afternoon. We're live uptown at the courthouse. Greg Suskin, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Greg. And we know you'll be back at 5 o'clock with the very latest from that case. We appreciate it. Tonight, Mecklenburg County will be voting commissioners on a $2.6 billion budget. As we've reported, the budget calls for a property tax hike. The county manager asked for essentially a two cent increase. So for most people, that will be about $120 extra per year on their tax bill. The budget would also boost the minimum wage for all full time city employees to $16 an hour. It would also designate $13 million towards the affordable housing crisis in our city. City and fund most of the Cross Charlotte Trail that will run from North Charlotte down to Pineville. New at noon, Atrium Health is committing $10 million to affordable housing. Atrium is a major employer in our area and says poor quality housing can directly impact people's house, health. I should say. Right now, the Mooresville Police Chief is on administrative leave amid an investigation into claims of a hostile work environment. The interim town manager says it's been investigating those claims since February. Channel 9's Elsa Gillis is in Mooresville. Elsa Chief Damon Williams could be off the job, we understand, for months. There are so many questions about what is going on inside this department, and it doesn't look like the town will be giving us any answers right now. This morning, a rep told me they couldn't comment on personnel matters. What we do know is that this is all coming from what officials say is an internal personnel investigation involving the police department. We've learned it's over complaints about having a hostile work environment. Our news partners at the Mooresville Tribune spoke to the interim town manager who said, that investigation has been going on since February. After a third party conducted more than 70 interviews, town leaders made the decision to place Chief Damon Williams on paid administrative leave. The town says this is solely a personnel matter and not based on any allegation of or suspicion of criminal activity. And this morning, we also learned the interim town manager put police captain David Call on paid administrative leave as well. That, too, they say, is solely a personnel matter. Right now, we don't know if his leave is connected to that investigation. This all comes one month after the whole town came together under the police chief after the devastating death of Officer Jordan Sheldon. So many questions right now. We will continue to push for answers and bring you the latest as we learn them. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Elsa. A frightening sexual assault in South End. A woman told police she was raped at gunpoint on New Bern Street. Police say the attack happened at a construction site just before 3 o'clock yesterday morning. The attacker also apparently took the victim's Samsung tablet and keys. We'll follow up on that for you. Today, Channel 9 is asking for dash cam video of a police chase across the Carolinas that we told you about. Police say the suspect nearly hit innocent drivers and construction workers. Wadesboro police say when they tried to stop Benny Smith, he took off going around cars in a construction zone and almost hitting a worker there. Multiple departments chased him across the state line back to Wadesboro. Police say he even ran people off the road during this chase, almost hit several cars head on. Smith eventually jumped out of the car near West Wade Street, we're told, and ran into the woods. Get this, it took officers and canine units six hours to actually find him. Smith is now in the Anson County Jail on several charges and a half million dollar bond. 
Workers at convenience stores are on edge as police try to find the masked robber who killed a West Charlotte store clerk. It happened yesterday morning inside the Shell station on Freedom Drive. Surveillance video caught the suspect right there who fired at least two shots, killing Ismael Dumbia. Last night, several people held a vigil in Dumbia's memory. I'm still kind of in shock with the whole situation. This man was like a brother to us. He's he was a great father. So I'll tell him he, he just killed our heart. We don't even know what to say. Hmm. CMPD and the FBI are offering a $15,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. Detectives are investigating two overnight armed robberies to see if they are connected. The first happened at this Circle K on Harris Station Boulevard in University City just before 1 a.m. The clerk told police two people came in with a gun, stole money, and then took off. The second robbery happened about 90 minutes later at the Sam's Mart on Nations Ford Road in southwest Charlotte. The clerk told police three suspects came into the store in that case with a gun, pistol whipped them, and took off with money. Medic took that person injured to the hospital. We're asking investigators again if either of those crimes were caught on surveillance video. We'll let you know. UNC Charlotte shooting survivor Drew Pescaro is still recovering at home today. But this morning he spoke with ESPN about how his love for sports really helped him through the tragedy after being shot. You can see in the, the video, DJ Moore came and visited me, uh, Chris Hogan, uh, Larry Ogan Joby from the Browns. Uh, Fred Whitfield, the president of the Hornets. I mean, it's just a surreal experience when these people that, I mean, you look up to that are larger than life, all of a sudden, you know, they, they almost feel like your peers. They're just there to support you. It was good to hear he's recovering. Piscaro was one of six students shot last month when a gunman walked into the Kennedy Building on campus and opened fire. Sadly, two of those students died. Walmart employees can get a four-year college degree for, get this, about a dollar a day. Kristen Allen works the overnight shift at the Walmart in Matthews. And one reason she took the job, well, she gets to go to college for about $30 per month. Her degree will say Brandman University, which you don't hear a lot about on the East Coast, but it's a real school and fully accredited college in California. Hopefully I'll be able to go to my commencement in California and actually graduate for real. So, so walk across the stage for real? I want to. That's my goal. And hopefully take the little monkeys with me too. She's on her way. Action 9's Jason Stajanki will have a full report at 5 o'clock today, including some of the other colleges that Walmart partners with and the national attention Kristen Allen will be getting later this week. Hunger is a problem in every corner of our community. Channel 9 and the Carolina Panthers are asking you to help do something about it by donating to the 9 Food Drive. There are drop-off bins right now for non-perishable food at Showmars, Ashley Homestar, a home store and ER Plumbing where you can take your donations. And we also have a very special collection on Wednesday from 10 o'clock until 7. It's right here at the WSOC TV studios at 1901 North Tryon Street. We appreciate your support. After several data breaches involving your personal information, lawmakers are stepping in. What the antitrust investigation underway means for all users. And a teen lost part of her leg and several fingers after that brutal shark attack over the weekend. Coming up next, the incredible actions her dad took to save her life. Kind of cloudy out there today, but it's still comfortable. We're in the upper 70s. Not bad. I am tracking more mugginess and the rain chances that will follow. Weather on WSOC is driven by Toyota of North Charlotte, I-77, exit 23, where big city low prices are just a click away.
We want to get you back to that breaking news in uptown Charlotte happening right now. Police are investigating a shooting at this scene. It's East 8th Street near North Davidson Street. These are live images coming from that scene as that investigation continues. A witness has told Channel 9 this was a drive-by shooting. Again, that is a witness telling us this was a drive-by shooting. That is not confirmed by CMPD yet, but we're told the victim does have minor injuries. No word on a suspect in this case yet. No word on motive. We, of course, will have the very latest for you throughout the day on our app and on Eyewitness News starting at 5 o'clock. Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple, all under the federal government's scrutiny. The U.S. House is launching a sweeping antitrust probe and promises a top-to-bottom review that could lead to a major overhaul of antitrust regulations. This comes after several data breaches involving your personal information. I think that Google and Twitter and Facebook, they're really treading on very, very troubled territory. I don't think that a president uh, should be running around pointing at companies and saying breaking them up without any kind of process here. But again, this is the House, controlled by Democrats, launching this investigation. The Justice Department and FTC also teaming up for an investigation into Google. They'll look at its internal practices and search rankings. It's important to note antitrust cases can take years to settle. The government's case against Microsoft, for example, took 10 years to play out. Channel 9 obtained exclusive photos and video of ICE agents arresting a man after he bonded out of jail. The ICE fugitive operations team picked up Luis Pineda Ancheta last weekend in South Charlotte. Immigration officials say Pineda Ancheta is in the country illegally and he's now been transferred to Georgia to be held. Now, CMPD arrested Pineda Ancheta twice for separate incidents. The second came after a nine hour standoff, you might remember. He was able to bond out of jail following both arrests. Mecklenburg County Sheriff Gary McFadden, you see him right there, does not cooperate with the immigration detainer program known as 287G. But ICE says, at the very least, they should have been given a heads up about Pineda and Cheta's release. Simply let ICE know when you're releasing a public safety threat. The sheriff said his office is required by law to release someone if they've met all court ordered requirements. This teen lost part of her leg and several fingers after a brutal shark attack at Atlantic Beach. And now we've learned Paige Winter's father actually went out and punched the shark five times on its nose until it let her go. Incredible. Experts say that is the spot you should punch to get a shark off of you in that situation. Winter says she's not mad about the attack, but we should all respect marine life. Her friends say they're not surprised by her sentiment. Overnight, Winter says she has extensive injuries, but knows she'll be okay in the long run. She does have a long recovery ahead of her, though, including several surgeries, and says she's just grateful that she survived and is alive. Certainly something to remember as we head to the beaches, but shark attacks are rare, folks, so don't avoid the beach just for that reason. Let's head over to meteorologist Keith Monday for a look at the forecast. Not really beach-like weather on the way, Keith. Not nah, looking like uh, likely, yeah. We have better rain chances coming our way, which is something that we actually desperately need. So it looks messy later this week, but we need the rain. So here it comes. We're 80 already in Gastonia, 78 in uh, Charlotte, 60 still in the mountains. Not warming up as quickly today with those high clouds and the cool air, which settled in early this morning. Felt great out out there to start today. Should be very comfy for baseball again tonight as well. After hitting highs around 84 today, we'll cool back into the 70s tonight. Mostly clear sky again, just those high clouds working their way through. I expect dry weather in Charlotte tonight, but our far southern counties may see a stray shower. I mean, the future cast, it's really benign, but you'll notice a few little cells bubbling up in the very far southern reaches. Some of those may creep in very late tonight toward Lancaster, toward Chesterfield. That's the moisture starting to work its way as southeast winds move in. And once that starts to kick in much more tomorrow, the threat for some rain, it's picking up. It's much more muggy on Wednesday, Thursday. It's going to be very humid, and that's going to be the story all the way through the end of the week. So it won't rain all day tomorrow, obviously. Maybe just a few cells bubbling up in the early afternoon coming off the mountains. They'll try to make a run toward the metro. We'll see how many of those survive. The latest run doesn't show as much, but even through the evening tomorrow, there will likely be scattered strong thunderstorms around. Gusty winds and heavy rain would be that threat. We get a break from that at least a little bit on Thursday, but by Friday and then the approaching weekend, the rain chances are back and they're going to stick around 
for several days. Check out the seven day forecast. This will be the last day we don't have rain in the forecast for about the next seven to ten days. So it's a solid chance of rain coming in. Could actually add up to several inches of rain as we had our way past the weekend. So it's been dry for a long spell and now it looks very unsettled for a long stretch as well. And once again, we need the rain, but we don't really want it on the weekends, yeah. especially. So I guess we're just going to have to roll with it a little bit. Bad timing. All right. Thank you, Keith. Mm -hmm. Coming up, hundreds of new truck drivers cannot start their jobs and may even lose them. Next, Action 9 investigates the illegal actions that wiped out their driving. Hundreds of truck drivers could lose their commercial driver's licenses and maybe their jobs through no fault of their own. Those truckers went to Carolina Truck Driving School. They passed a commercial driver's license test, but the North Carolina DMV told Action 9 investigator Jason Stujanki the school was missing 450 records. Bottom line, letters went to those drivers saying they now have to retake the test. Otherwise, no CDL, no job. Yes. Stressful. Yeah. That's when you got a family. Why should the burden fall on us? You know, we took the test. We passed the test. The school's owner told Jason an employee stole those files, but he doesn't know which employee. The owner is now trying to help those drivers who have to retake the test. Closed captioning is brought to you by Bojangles Famous Chicken and Biscuits. It's bow time.
Final check of the forecast. And most of us will stay dry for the rest of the day today. Far southern areas, though, can't roll out a stray shower trying to sneak in. One just north of Union, South Carolina, is trying to pop up now. I don't expect much for the rest of the day, but we'll track this throughout the afternoon. Today at 5, though, we'll be previewing the much bigger chance of rain that's coming in for the rest of the week. I mean, today is the last day that we'll have dry conditions, and we need the rain, so a lot could be coming. That's true. That radar is going to get busy in the yep. coming days. Thank you, Keith, and thank you for making Channel 9 your choice for news this midday. Be sure to join Steve and the rest of the team at 5 o'clock. Have a good afternoon. WSOC TV is a Cox Media Group station.